Greetings and welcome to Stamper Cinema. Once again, I am your host. My name is Andrew. As always, thank you very much for downloading this latest episode. And this time around, we're going to be doing something that we've been promising we were going to do. Well, seemingly forever, but just over a year. We're going to be completing our Avengers project. That's right. I've got Mr. Brandon Krisky returning. And this time around, we are going to be talking about the the fourth and final chapter of, well, at least of this saga version of the Avengers. And of course, that means we are talking about Avengers Endgame. And as I mentioned before, we've got Brandon here. So hello, Brandon. How's it going, man? Long time no see. Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. And I say long time no see. But in fact, like at the time of recording, I literally saw you like 24 hours ago. I know. <laughs> what were we doing? Yeah, we were uh, we were celebrating the Atlanta Hawks uh, laying the like the the beat down on Charlotte. And it was fun. It was a good time watching uh, watching Atlanta do something. Oh, yeah. Doing something fun. Yeah. But obviously, you know, we, we can talk we can talk a little basketball, but the listeners here, what they really want us to do is they want us to be talking about this Avengers. This has been a really popular series on this podcast. We've had a ton of downloads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely a win. <clears throat> well, you know, um, as of our recording right now, we're only a few weeks away from the uh, release of uh, Doctor Strange. And I'm you know, really excited about it just kind of continues to build on. So who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll uh, have another one of these. Oh, I guess that's really a good natural segue. Maybe you're alluding to it right now, but I'm like, well, now that this is done, I mean, we got to have another project, right? We got to talk about another movie. So, I mean, the, the whole idea is the guest chooses the film to talk about. So, right. You choose it. I watch it. We discuss it, but we'll get to that. But I think we've got bigger fish to fry right now. And that, of course, is getting into this film, this little movie that the viewers may or may not have heard of. Uh, this little movie called Avengers Endgame. Small little budget of $356 million. No big deal. Only grossed about $2.8 million in the box office worldwide. About 858 domestic. But what's interesting is that doesn't even make it like number one in those three stats that I gave you. It's not the number one overall for biggest budget. It's not the number one domestic in the box office. And it's not number one like worldwide. But yet, you got to say this is the biggest freaking movie like ever made, right? I mean, <clears throat> I would, I would say... And I'm fact checking you on that, uh, that, uh, worldwide sales. I gotcha. So. <laughs> yeah. It, it, uh, um, worldwide, it is trumped only by avatar. See, but they cheated. They re-released. Of course. And once you do a re-release of this, then it'll bump itself back. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, I'll tell you what, you, you know, to your point, kind of Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds. We all know that Hank Aaron is the home run king. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but um, as far as like excitement, you know, a, a feeling like the biggest movie of all time, um, all that kind of thing. I mean, outside, outside of the fact that, you know, at least for a minute it was. It and we alluded to it all throughout these past, you know, podcasts and the series is. It was all building up to this over, what was it, 10 years? Right. 10 years. We had an idea, you know, of this Marvel universe. Now, we may not have known the entire 10 years that it was building to something, but by the time we got there, it felt like this was it. And, and that was it. And this was everything that everything was leading up to. I mean, and it just goes to it, it and we'll get into it, but it truly is. a, a It's a great movie, I think. And there's a really compelling storyline um, or storylines. But there was a lot of fan service in this, just mm. like an in Infinity War, but even more in this. I mean, it was just so thick. Um, but I'll tell you what. If they would have made it even more fan service, I would have been happier because at that point. I did. And I think most of these fans would 
probably agree. Um, that's what we wanted. And I, I definitely want to get into the, the fan service, but I, I want to save that for a little, a little bit further. Once we've actually like had the opportunity to talk a bit about what this, you know, the plot of this movie is, you know, some fun facts, what it is that you like about it, some key scenes. And then I want to get into that fan service because I've got some really interesting nuggets, but I guess the, the first way to officially speak about this episode was to kind of, I don't know, do like a little brief summary about what this film is. And if you, uh, if you want, I'm more than happy to kind of tackle it. I'm, I'm more than happy to do like a two minute brief summary, unless you want to, unless you want to summarize the film. No, I mean, um, I just watched it, what, yesterday? Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear your summary of it. Okay, so the, the best way that I can phrase it is this movie literally picks up where the previous film ends, right? So Thanos is one. Half of all living creatures are gone. Our original Avenger Iron Man is somewhere 10 million light years away and basically is left for dead. But fortunately for him, he's saved by Brie Larson, who basically just puts the ship on her on her shoulder and jets it all the way back to planet Earth, you know, saving him, which is yay. They run into the uh, the remaining Avengers and. And then a rat comes into play that, you know, this uh, a rat basically is responsible for really saving everything because a rat somehow jump starts. Uh, ant-man's little truck uh van and boom he gets out of yep. the, yep. the little like quantum whatever it's called and the quantum um, realm quantum realm and basically ant-man has an idea to time travel and well i actually actually before we even get to ant-man i guess what i would also mention is iron man comes back and they they figure out okay well let's fucking let's fucking go get thanos and undo what he just did so they find Thanos on, I forget, whatever planet. And turns out they can't undo what Thanos did because he destroyed the stones. So Thor yep. essentially, you know, beheads him. And it's kind he of... He went uh, for the head. He went for the head. Went he for went the head. for the head. So Thanos dies and they can't do anything about it. And so they're all sad. Then they fast forward five years later. Everybody is still sad. And uh, and that's where Ant-Man comes into play, where basically a rat, you know, uh, gets him out of the quantum realm and Ant-Man has an idea like, hey, let's travel back in time and we can do this. And eventually they all come to terms and they decide they want to go ahead and do it. Uh, but again, everybody's really angry, especially Hawkeye, who's gone like full on the bride mode out of uh, uh, Kill Bill, where he's basically just like a samurai traveling across the planet Earth and just whooping ass. Anyway, they all. Now, did, did you watch the that series, Ronan? Did I watch what now? Did you watch any of that on Disney Plus? After no, I don't know what that is. <sighs> okay, we'll get back to it. Sure. And so, anyway, they all they all kind of join forces and they all gather. They go back in time and they they do a whole lot of time traveling and they get back in time and they have a big epic battle, like a like a 45, 55 minute long battle where they essentially take down Thanos and you, uh, you, you get all that really like great stuff that people have been wanting, which is, you know, that uh, Avengers assemble and um, Captain America grabbing Thor's hammer and then Iron Man basically uh, snapping his fingers and utters the line that I guess a throwback to the first film where he's like, I am Iron Man, snaps yep. his finger and, yep. and Thanos dies. And, Iron Man dies and they're all sad, but they're also happy. And the movie ends at basically the funeral of Iron Man. And then we, we see that Captain America is going to go back in time and replace, uh, turn, put the stones back where they originally came. He stays back in time. He has his dance with, uh, with home girl. He comes back uh, to the present day and he's an old man and he turns the shield yep. over to Sam. And that's, that's your movie. Yep, absolutely. And <clears throat> You know, it was really awesome because I remember feeling this sense of uh, kind of almost like a bittersweet closure to the story. You know, if you've ever had a TV show and I say a TV show or a series because 
it almost feels like it from the time commitment over mm. the years of this mm-hmm. storyline, right? Like, I'll give you a great example, Friends, right? Consider, you know, that's a good example of a, a you know, a series or a storyline that had been going on for what? How many years? Uh, I mean, 10 seasons, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was a long time. So, you know, what What the cool thing about this was, even though it was bittersweet, um, you know, with Tony Stark and Captain America and stuff like that. And the beauty of the Marvel is it's still part of the universe. So there was right. that, that excitement leading into whatever's next, you know, but definitely a very intense movie. Very intense, I would say, uh, but a very highly successful action film. Now, I mm-hmm. think they check all the boxes. You mentioned the, the, the fan service. And like, so we'll get into that shortly, but check all the boxes critically they all agree with us. You're looking at like 94% uh, approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. From an audience perspective, we're looking at like 90% audience approval. IMDb gives it like an 8.4, which is good for like, I don't know, 60 to 65 all time on their little like metrics, right? So seemingly everybody, seemingly everybody uh, um, enjoyed the film. If there is one critique, it's, the same type of critique that any movie gets, which is right when you get in the middle where sometimes it, it feels it like it can drag, right? A lot of movies experience that. And the, the New Yorker critic, like, even though he enjoyed the film went on, this is uh, Anthony Lane of the New Yorker. Basically uh, he kind of like shat on the film over the length of it, where he said, you can easily duck out during the middle hour, do some shopping, slip back into your seat and you, you wouldn't miss anything. And Disagree. <laughs> I mean, you 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 might lose some like witty dialogue, and you'll you might miss you know Thor uh, bullying some kid over a video game. But by and large, you know that what's going to happen the the end, or rather the beginning of the film and the end of the film is really what it's all about. And the middle is essentially just that journey of getting mm-hmm. everybody back to it. So I I see the point. But it's still a really fun middle act. The the, the journey, right, uh, is is something that's very uh, appealing to it. So I do have a little bit of pushback to that that New Yorker critic. But mm-hmm. you know, you're always gonna you can't please everybody. But again, even the dude that like did that review actually had a lot of positive things to say about it. That was just like his one little like gripe about it. And I guess. And we'll, like I said, we'll talk about uh, fan service because there are a couple little critiques that the film have had over kind of like uh, playing to the fans a bit. But, you know, uh, I think we're kind of splitting hairs over the fact that the movie highly successful, highly appreciated from audiences and critics alike. And the, the box office numbers prove it, right? I mean, it's, it's made a ton of money, a ton of money. It, you know, it had may have had like the third largest budget of any film ever made behind only like Stranger Tides and Age of Ultron, but extremely successful. Now, I know this movie is very, very important and you've got some history for it. And I, we've talked about it on other episodes, but the whole reason why I even saw this movie or the last one was because of conversations that we had and just of how energized and excited you were over this franchise. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was always kind of, meh, don't really care. I'm but, pretty sure. I remember when it, the movie was coming out, I told you, oh, you better go see this movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and you said, Hey, I haven't seen a, you know, a lot of these or whatever, or any of them, maybe I can't right. remember. Um, and I'm like, I don't care. You have to go see this movie. And I did. And, mm-hmm. um, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to pull something up. So, uh, but yeah, tell me a little bit about. Yeah. So um, actually I was really excited to get to this episode because I have some, you know, cool little fun facts and that kind of thing. Um, or anything like that, but uh, my neighbor it, you know, happened to be a special effects makeup artist uh, on Avengers Endgame and uh, as well as, you know, a number of other Marvel movies. Um, so I remember she she text messaged me one day, you know, hey, Brandon, what are you doing tomorrow? And I happen to be free. So 
all she did was texted me an address and a time to be there. And she said, you don't want to be late. And so I showed up and it ended up being um, Pinewood Studios down in, um, you know, South Atlanta or the set of Avengers Endgame um, behind the scenes, walking around, um, spent about two hours in the prop warehouse meeting with the prop master, um, you know, got to see them filming scenes and some notable ones as well. Um, so it, it was really awesome. So uh, when I finally went to go see the movie, uh, all these things that I had seen, I could place and mm. it was really cool because I thought I had it figured out like where all these different things were, what I was seeing, that type of thing. And some of them I did, um, but I'll, oh, wow. there, there was one moment uh, that was just a shock to me, which was pretty cool. So um, like, what did you see? What did you see? Yeah. So uh, we got there, you know, I had to uh, sign an NDA. I wasn't allowed to talk about anything at all, period. Um, I was actually allowed to take one photo. That was it the entire time. I was surprised that they even let me keep my phone. <laughs> so was my friend. She was like, how'd you get your phone in there? Um, uh, and I, you know, Hey, nobody asked. So I just kept walking. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a couple highlights. So if it was, if it was a prop in that movie, as far as like a weapon or something, I held it. I <laughs> absolutely, I held it. Um, I held, you know, the different types of props. So you, you had like the hero prop for the close ups and the real ones and that kind of stuff. And the stunt ones, um, I got to hold like Thor's hammer the real nice. one that nice. thing was heavy um held captain america's shield which was amazing that's the picture i would have shown you um that was the one i was allowed to to take a couple really cool if you got if you want a couple like anecdotal stories I would love um, it. yeah so in in and you just watched this movie right i did okay so this is probably my favorite one because it's it, you know, I'm a huge uh, Robert Downey Jr. fan, just mm -hmm. not only that he's a phenomenal actor, but, you know, he he was able to pull himself together. A, and a few I mean, times. look, look at him now. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there an actor that's bigger than him? Anyways, it was just a really cool story. So I was in the prop house and. um. I was listening to the, these stories and in the scene where Tony Stark is going out to talk to his daughter, who's like in the tent or the, whatever it was. Do you remember? Okay, yeah. 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 Um, he had gone on a little chair, like a miniature chair, right? Like one for a kid or a doll. Okay. Okay. It was yellow, I believe. Um, well, it was supposed to be a background prop, just like something for the set. And Every single take, Robert Downey Jr. Um, insisted on really insisted on getting this little chair and sitting on it. And every time it would break because it was just this cheap, like little old wooden chair. Right. Okay. Held together with twine. And I guess there was no budging on the chair. So they actually went and m recreated the entire chair out of machine to lose it to look exactly I'm, like I'm sorry the the computer just froze what uh they they, they did it out of what now so they used machined aluminum mm. to recreate the entire chair repainted it to look like this old antique chair um and you know i can confirm it was definitely metal because i sat on it oh nice um, <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh that's that's crazy but it was kind of endearing because i'm like man because when you're watching the scene, it just kind of makes when he's sitting down there, it almost helps connect him with his daughter in the scene a little better. You know, it's the small stuff sometimes. Um, another really cool story is um, the prop master was telling me that uh, Spider-Man's backpack, he wasn't quite sure how to style it 
as far as like, I think it's got some patches and writing and that kind of thing, Sharpies on the backpack. He couldn't figure it out. So he sent it to school with one of his daughters and told them to make it look like a high school guy's backpack. Nice. So <laughs> it's like the small kind of touches. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, let's see. What else I did I see? It was really cool. I, I was I was quiet. I didn't talk to anybody mm-hmm. until I was, you know, spoken to. I got to lay low. I was allowed there, but just lay low. Yeah. And uh, Stay so. The fuck out of the way. Yeah, exactly. I knew my I knew my spot, you know. Oh, um, so we were in the lunch line because they had the catered lunch and it was really hard not to say something, but I was standing right to, you know, to my right. And there was, there were the Russo brothers just standing there. Okay. Okay. And like literally right next to me. And I'm just like, you know, I know the, the listeners can't see me, but we're on a video call. I'm just looking like, Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are the Russo brothers, you know? And yeah, I, um, I guess it's a natural segue just to even, and I'm sure you got some more anecdotes, but yeah, just for the listeners, the, the Russo brothers, you got Joe and Anthony, they're the, they were the directors of, of this film as well as Captain America and Infinity War and, and, and Civil War. Yeah, but they did, um, what, did, Arrested Development, I think. Right. Uh, did they, was it arrested? Or, it was, or was it one like one of the writers? Or maybe they did. Maybe they did direct an episode. But I know that they were involved. They had I think done, they were the writer. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah they, there, there is a connection to Arrested Development. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They weren't big action directors or anything like that. No. No. But their take on it was pretty fresh. I think you know. I think they did a good job. But um, no, it was just a great experience. Um, uh, probably. Uh, you know, I, I watched them film um, a pivotal scene in the end uh, fight, which was pretty cool. Um, I got to watch a uh, Doctor Strange film in person. Um, probably the f- silliest was we rode in this little van because um, they had little vans to take you around the set. And... I just jump in there and my friend was, I guess, on a first name basis with uh, Wong's stunt double. So we're just like, okay, okay. yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, it was just really and everybody on the set was just really passionate about what they were doing. Yet, you know, you could just you just tell it was really cool. That's awesome, man. I love that. And this was in what, like 2017, 2018. It was 2018. Okay. So it was released in 2018. And so this was during some, I guess, reshoots or something like that. Cause not everybody was there. Um, no, it would have to have been 2019 that it was released. Cause yeah, I was still so in the, Austin in 2018. Yeah. You so you know what? Hold on a second. I'll tell you exactly what day it was. Hold on. Sure. Not a problem. So while Brandon's looking that up, I want to uh, give you a couple other little like fun stats while he's gathering everything. So we mentioned the directors, Joe and Anthony Russo, and the the writing team it was uh, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. Now the four of them, that little quartet, they they were involved uh, with Infinity War, Civil War, obviously Endgame, but um, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely also wrote like Guardians of the Galaxy and shit. I think they actually wrote the original Captain America as well. So that connection uh, goes back and the four of them really, they, they, they all kind of tag teamed their way through creating Infinity War and Endgame. They, they made them the same year, uh, did like maybe a few months apart and everything. What about James Gunn? James Gunn did uh, one of the Guardians. Guardians. Yeah, one of the Guardians films. Uh, yeah, I was, just, I was just talking about the the, the writer team of um, uh, Joe and Anthony Russo. I'm sorry, the director team, and, uh, and Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. Yeah, uh, they were, they were kind of killing it just mm-hmm. like a machine. Um, it's almost like when they did Lord of the Rings, you know, not them, but Peter Jackson, those guys, you sure, know, sure, they sure. just like, what was that? How, how long did they sh- shoot that movie? Yeah, the they well they shot them all simultaneously. They were all it was, doing. It was more like eighteen months. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wasn't it like eighteen months? It was something it was like great. that. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. And then obviously years on doing post production yeah. work. And yeah, everything, but. Just, just I mean, look at the result. 
and shit, I mean, another little connection because uh, Weta did the, like the special effects for Lord of the Rings, and they also were involved a lot with um, with this production as well. So some connections there. But you were you were looking. Did you were you able to find out the uh, the date that you? Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Um, I won't say the exact date. <laughs> But uh, so they don't look up my security records, <laughs> but uh, it was September of 2018. So so it was, you know, what, nine months before it came out, roughly ish. Mm-hmm. Um, so my last story, which was the one that shocked me, was we were walking through the sound stages and it was really cool um, just seeing like the inter- interiors and stuff. And so we were walking around this, this um, the interior of a, a home. Um, and I thought. The entire time until I watched the movie um, that it was Hawkeye's cabin. Mm. And I'm watching the movie. So I I rushed to the theaters that Friday. I, I wasn't doing the mi- midnight release um, that Friday at like noon or whatever it was, one o'clock. But we what we were walking around was uh, Tony Stark's cabin. So... The minute it came on the scene, which is really cool, we're here in Georgia. You can actually Airbnb that cabin now. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. But I was like, oh my gosh, I was in Tony Stark's cabin, so that was pretty cool too. But, that is cool, um, man. Enough about my, you know, cool, you know, little adventure. Let's talk about the movie. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about the movie and product. So where. I got to ask you, Andrew, wh- where on your um, list of, you know, the four that we will have talked about by the end of the series, would you list this? So if I were to rank them, I've, I've, no, I, I re, I revisited this film just a couple of nights. I was watching it on this uh, streaming platform that I watch and I watch it with a bunch of other people called stream lounge hey stream lounge people um and i was saying that this is either my favorite of the series or my second favorite that or infinity war now i think i think i do take this one in a slight edge over infinity war so and so i would go this one infinity war the original and then age of ultron so that would be my one through four that way what about you you know, so it's tough. Uh, I go back and forth on Infinity War and Endgame. Um, and I it's tough because there there are so many just iconic moments in both. And I think that's what it comes down to is, you know, because you'll watch these movies and to your point earlier, there are going to be some times that may not be as exciting, but it's mm-hmm. those moments that capture you that make you connect with a movie, right? right. That any movie, so, you know, uh, whether it's like, oh my gosh, that was crazy, or oh my gosh, I'm so scared, or oh, that really touched me, you know, whatever kind of movie, those are the ones you remember. So that's why they're good. Agreed. Agreed. So I think uh, slight edge to end game, mm-hmm. you know. I think it's boosted by the fact that you had two major storylines being kind of closed in a sense. Mm -hmm. The guy Mm -hmm. who started it, Iron Man, ended it. Right. And that was the end of his story, too, kind of. You know, so yeah, it's a great, I'd say Endgame, Infinity War, Avengers, and then, um, Ultron. Yeah. I, I think the reason why this one gets the nod for me as far as like being the the better one. And you know, um one, obviously the 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 element of of Robert Downey Jr.'s arc, you know, Iron Man's arc, where basically he did a selfless act in the end, right? I mean, where this is a character that's always been very selfish to do something that was very, very selfless, mm-hmm. basically, knowing that. Um, that was it. That was it for him, right? Um, I mean, they. He, that was it. That was the one in fourteen million. Right. That was the one in fourteen million. Exactly. And so I thoroughly enjoyed that. But really, the thing that worked for me, as far as like why I enjoy this movie, kind of goes back to we we mentioned it in the previous episode is the 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 loss of 
of loved ones because at the core of this movie the like the real theme of this movie is time right time is precious life is precious you, you know like uh be be close to the ones that you love because you never know when they're going to be gone right and the movie opens up very very beautifully and it reminds me of this tv show on hbo it was called the leftovers where people in the blink of an eye just disappear and the movie opens with hawkeye having a fun little like outdoor event with his family you know they're they're, they're grilling up hot dogs and Hawkeye's, you know, uh, doing some crossbow stuff with, with, his, with his kid. And he just turns his back for one second and then everybody's gone. And that, that feeling of confusion, hopelessness, loss, it, it, it just really, it gets you in the feels. And again, it just reminds me of, of, uh, of this TV show, the leftovers. And I'm going to put it in the notes on this episode. So if you're listening to podcast, definitely take a look at the, at the notes, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if the opening scene of this movie is available on there, but I'm definitely going to put a YouTube link to the, the pilot episode, like the opening, like two or three minutes of that, where there there's this woman in uh, her car, but before she's in her car, she's on the laundry mat. She's got like her screaming little infant daughter and she just won't stop screaming and she's screaming and the mother's getting progressively more and more frustrated and they get in the car and the baby's still screaming and the woman's on the phone and then in a blink, the, the screaming stops and she turns around and her kid's no longer in her car. She gets out and she's screaming for her kid and and then you see everybody else in the street they're they're like car accidents happening people are screaming they don't know where their people are and um so it's just a beautiful parallel from this world versus this uh this hbo show called the leftover so it, it had me at its hook that way was that the one what was it kirk cameron no no so the leftover oh no 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 no. that's left behind uh the leftovers who's in that because i i I haven't watched it but um i'm trying to so the the star of that is justin thoreau um carrie coons is also in it carrie coons played right one of the the alien chicks in um in infinity war actually she was like the alien chick in infinity war but um yeah. So the, I mean, that's right. Some of midnight, I think. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's my, that was my in for this movie as far as like, all right, I'm, I'm willing to go on this journey. And that idea of potentially being able to save those that have lost you. Right. Because I mean, this is, I mean, that's really what this movie is all about is again, time and not being able to do this and that. And if you had the ability to, to change time, you know, like, at what cost, you know, like would, you know, how's it, how's it going to, do you, do you run the risk of losing everything subsequently that you've already made? Right. So like Iron Man's conundrum in this film is the fact that it, it'd be great. It'd be great if I can save everybody else, but if I lose what, what I've now gained, is that worth it? Right. And right. There, there's, so it, it does tackle, it's more than just a popcorn movie. It, it does tackle some really, interesting thoughts and even though even if they're kind of glossed over a little bit if you go back and watch it you you do see that there there that there are those themes that are addressed in the film definitely touches on some more mature themes as well um which i think helps its watchability factor as far as rewatching it there's different things to pick up on but um one thing we didn't really talk about is and and i think it was definitely an important story arc over the course of the last two movies um, and really leading into the next phase of Marvel uh, is with Thor. Okay. See Thor at the beginning of the movie at, at the end of, uh, you know, half of everybody disappearing, he's still, you know, buff Thor and they go and they kill Thanos, you know, and then um, all that. And by the time those five years pass, he's fat, he's drinking a lot. Um, fun fact, I don't know if you picked up in at the uh, Avengers headquarters is Tropicalia, which is from yep. Georgia. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I, was, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but, you know, and he's let himself go and, and they have to almost force him to come help try to save everyone again 
um, and lit everyone. So, um, you know, watching that, watching the the full circle Iron Man, watching Captain America finally get to rest, you know, and do something for himself mm-hmm. for once, um, and watching that kind of almost changing the guard. I think it was very p- important and pivotal movie for the franchise too. Agreed. Agreed. Now, when we talk a little bit about loss and we're, we're you, you know, you reference uh, Thor. So I've never seen any of the Thor films and obviously I, I, but I know movies, so I know Renee Russo and I hadn't seen her in these other these other Avengers films. And I, I know that that's his mother. Does she, and I assume in like these Thor movies, does she die on camera? Like what, like what? So she dies. Um, she gets killed in Asgard. Um, I think it's alluded to in when Thor goes back. Remember to get um, the stone or to get, no, to get his hammer, to get the hammer. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So, so, uh, yeah. And then you've got, you know, Loki is gone. All his friends are gone. Mm-hmm. You know, Thanos had essentially destroyed much everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, his home is gone. So, and then at that point, you know, he's lost too. So, what's the point mm-hmm. for him? I guess. Uh, and you know, by the end of the film, he was, he was back at it. Um, just needs to lose a couple pounds, <laughs> you know, that Thor. So, or, or um, when, how's it like referred to like in the credits? I think they refer to him as Lebowski Thor. Did you yeah, see that? Uh, the yeah. dude Thor, the dude Thor. That's it. Yeah. The so dude. Thor. Really, really quick. I'll show you this. You see this? I do see that. So for those that so, are uh, listening, so this is a plaster. There's six of these in the world. Um, it came from a church in the UK where it was filmed, uh, where this was Asgard. This was some of the panels in Asgard when Thor went back. Mm, okay. So that was from the set, which was just kind of cool. That's you can super cut cool, it man. Out. No, man, I'll keep that in. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you show um, me some, yeah. some fun so, stuff. Yeah, I, and yeah, so so you got Thor, and then, you know, who else did we lose? Black Widow. See, and that was going to be one of the questions I had for you is, so we know who's in this movie. Well, virtually everybody, right? So, like, a two-part question. So, who who's not in this movie? And then who dies, like, actually dies in this film? So... You know, Scarlett Johansson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she Widow. dies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gone. Um, um, and then you've got, what was the other part of it? Uh, who's, who, yeah, uh, who, who's not in this film? Who's not in the film? Um, yeah, do, uh, from, from where? From where? Because, like, you've got a lot of people not in the film. Let me, let me rephrase it. Which Avenger is not in this film? I mean, I would say Vision. Vision. There you go. Yeah, Vision. Exactly. You know, um, Vision. <laughs> So, yeah, that's uh, I know this movie pretty well. <laughs> sure do. Uh, so I sounds like you've got a little a bit of a guest in uh, the room. With oh, you. yeah. Hold on. Come here, buddy. For uh, those listening, uh, this is Brandon. Odin. Hey, uh, uh, so we see a little a little little dog. That's Odin. And so yep. Brandon, Brandon's been slightly uh, uh, <laughs> being kept busy by a, by a little dog and. Uh, fans of the show know that I love my dog. So if I if I see a dog or hear a dog, I'm going to stop everything and have to start talking about said dog. So oh yes, yeah, actually, um, he's kind of on topic. So oh, his name Thor's is Odin, dad. right? Oh. Yeah, Thor's dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, his name is Odin, which is the entire reason I got him. I saw him, and just for the listeners, he is a little. Um, black and tan wiener dog uh wiener dog <laughs> he is a hellion <laughs> um, you can tell he, he straight up loves you though man he, he's just uh, uh he's licking his face but he's also just 
He was kind of like doting on you, like when you're talking, he's like, oh, this is my dad. I love my dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's my buddy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw him and I was just like, oh my gosh, his name's Odin. And I, I will show you after you're done recording i'll show you the video of when we got him nice um, nice um, but anyways so yeah. so back to the movie and not my special guest um but yeah i mean obviously every i mean there's it, it's impossible to mention every single character in this film and every single character arc in this which is weird considering the fact this movie is three hours long but there are hundreds upon hundreds it's not even the extended version <laughs> and it's oh my god um i guess you know, not that I'm trying to wrap this up, but we we've got, we've got a lot to go. I mean, there's a lot to unpack when it's a three hour movie, but I also don't want to be talking about it for three hours. So just trying to do kind of, I think we should talk about our favorite moments. Okay. There you go. So you start off favorite moment. All right. One of, one of my favorite moments. um, And I think it was probably, a lot of people's is when uh, Thanos is fighting Thor and Thanos is he's got Thor down and uh, Thor's hammer raises from the ground. And next thing you know, it, it winds up back and it's Captain America holding that, that hammer. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it, that is something that I think, pretty much every fan wanted to see. I think it was almost, at least for me, it was one of those things like, no, there's no way they'll do it. It would be too cool. It would be mm-hmm. too cool. It would just mm-hmm. be too cool. Um, there's no way they'd be that cool. And, you know, we were talking about it. The studio totally was, um, they, like I said, did a great job, great storyline, but 100% a ton of fan service. And that's one of the ones that I'm like, yep, you got that one right. I mean, to be fair, they did foreshadow it in Ultron, right? I mean, they did. Like, yes. When he kind of tried to move it a little bit. And, and then he just had like a little like whatever. And Thor, Thor was the only person that recognized it, which is why like it goes back to the is I knew it line is because he was the only one that saw that it kind of like budged a little bit when when captain did it, at least in, uh, Ultron. Yep. So that was, that was probably one of my favorites, just from a total nerd standpoint. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, from the comic canon to just how cool would that be? Um, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, how about you? Uh, no, I, I mentioned the opening scene, which again, it, it's a very bleak moment, but I do, I do love that. I, because what is the one thing I've been saying since the beginning of doing this podcast is the fact that I've uh, always that I that I forced you to do this at gun <laughs> gun gun uh, exactly point yeah exactly. Like, look 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 here you, it, <laughs> the guy's off screen it's under the table it's fine okay right. just we only got a couple more minutes I promise we won't have to do this again. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, what I've, what I've always said, my, the issue that I've had with, with most comic books and a lot of these is the fact that there are no real stakes. There's no real loss or anything. And, and, and then to have a moment to begin, you know, where you, you just see the, for my own money, like Hawkeye is my favorite Avenger and I, and, and nothing other than the fact that it's Jeremy Renner. You've I love said Jeremy. that. Yeah, and I love Jeremy Renner, and uh, he's you know his character has uh, doesn't he uh, doesn't he live like way out in like Wyoming or something? And maybe. just like I think he just like rides on like pickup trucks all day. I, I could believe it. Like I've I've just I've known his work since I was a teenager. He did this shitty film, but I saw it when I was like a sophomore, junior in high school. It was called National Lampoon Senior Trip. What was it, it was called? like. A, uh, it was National Lampoon's senior trip. It was like his first film, and the dude's like my age, and uh, so I just enjoyed his work. And obviously, I loved uh, the Hurt Locker, and I just enjoy his work. So, yeah, I just dig yeah. him. And the fact the movie opened with him, and then that little connection. So that's. But if I were to do a 
to use kind of like a, the 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 fan service uh, element. Well, no, my, it's just whichever one is your, my, you know, because we'll do a few of them. Yeah, but. my other bit, even though I completely disagree with how they went about it, well, uh, is where they're talking about like time travel and basically they're just, they're, they're just, you know, talking about time travel films and they're talking about back to the future and uh, all these other time travel movies and the whole nod of when they're yeah. trying to explain time travel and they're saying uh, back to the future is bullshit. First yeah. off, back to the future <laughs> is not bullshit, but I enjoy it. I, you know, like, it's like, Oh, okay. These are my type of people that they're, they're, you know, like, I can relate to the Avengers now because they they yeah, watch movies yeah. too, and uh, yeah, so I, I thoroughly I think, enjoyed that. I think it's better than I think it's better than referencing like uh, how uh, Robert Downey Jr. or I mean Tony Stark and Doctor Strange were doing it in uh, Infinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this back this and forth, like, but it was more yeah. like this felt organic. This was and natural. more natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was coming right. from a place with like Don Cheadle and Paul Rudd, yeah. where like you know you you had them kind of going. It's just and it, there. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. That yeah. that might have been improvised. Some of it could have been. You know, some of it could have been, especially with mm-hmm. like Paul Rudd. Right. Well, I mean, don't cut my boy uh, Don Cheadle short, man. That guy is clutch. I, I love. He's him. okay. He's okay. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, uh, when you, dude, you're talking Paul Rudd, man. He's he's a national treasure. <laughs> yeah, look. Have you seen "I Love You, Man"? Of course, <laughs> I, I've seen. Okay, well, ever, other than Ant Man, the the two Ant Men film, Ant Man. You films. haven't seen those? No. Uh, but they're I, I, they're good. Um. The rest just, of the supporting cat is is really good, and and it's like a they're caper movies, so they're mm-hmm. pretty in like if you okay, I think you'd really enjoy them if you take away the hero aspect. I think if you just the story and the the acting and the characters and the cast and the chemistry with the cast, and I it goes back to d- just disney nailing the casting on almost every character um i think you'd really enjoy them i think you'd really you what if you ever have a couple hours of downtime Mm -hmm. go watch them noted um but okay so you got those two um you know i was i was watching the the movie the other day again and one thing just duck in my mind and it kind of goes back to that that same scene of the the massive fight is uh i remember watching the trailer and it was captain america getting up off the ground and he had his shield and he just he was messed up Mm, like more beat up than we'd ever seen him he was the last one standing and he just straps his shield. You remember that? You're talking about the Avengers assemble scene where basically everybody right comes before through. it, right before it, right before they start coming out. Um, do you remember? Yeah, so, yeah, I'm with you. And then it, it pulls out and it's just like this huge army on one side. And Thanos is just like, you know, throughout however long I've been killing all these people and it's never been personal. Um, but this, I'm going to enjoy it. And it's just this huge army and it's just this lone captain America standing there. And it's not slow motion really, or anything like that. But the, I remember watching it and the moment just hung in the air for a minute, you know, and remember I'm a huge Marvel fan. So it's like real. And, uh, and then all of, a sudden you hear uh you know hey cap cap you know and it's falcon and then it was just like oh it's on you know this is this is the this is like the for i think like fantasy and sci-fi and all this stuff like you know you think about these big battles and there's always some you know you always wish it was bigger you know right. i remember even like lord of the rings you know oh man i wish it was just like an hour long battle i wish i wish i wish you know all these different things uh i think a lot of movies braveheart you know it's a big battle there's lots of big battles but you know it's it's never epic enough when you're watching it and i think they did a pretty good job because it it was pretty epic right no for sure you know 
So I think that just that entire last hour is, <laughs> you know, was my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. It was all, it's 10 years was building up to that hour, you know, mm-hmm. and showdown. And I, I fundamentally wholeheartedly agree. Now, what I want to do is because we talked a little bit about fan service, kind of bring it because it kind of ties into what you just referenced. Now, obviously, fans love fan service. They, they just did. We, we, we love mm-hmm. like, all right, this is mm-hmm. how we envision it. This is what we would want. It wouldn't it be great. Wouldn't it be cool if they did this, if they did that, yada, yada. And Endgame is filled with it. Now, I do want to... Not that this means anything else, but I just want to bring it up because we have to have the the point and counter. Be careful. Right? Be careful. So uh, Slate magazine basically probably did this for some uh, some clickbait, but it's still they do bring a couple of things because I've heard it echoed other places. But I'm going to read a little miniature. Is this a credible? Slate. Is this a credible outlet? I mean, it's it's. Questionable, questionable. Okay, okay, but that being okay. said, I'm, I'm bringing this up because right. I've heard other people echo okay. this. So just bear with me because they, they, they started, but then the bring conclusion. it on. All right. Mm-hmm. So Avengers Endgame takes its fan service duties seriously as a culmination of an 11 year, 22 film cycle. This season finale of a film has to resolve countless storylines and character arcs, but it also takes frequent breathers to say, hey, Captain America finding an earlier version of himself, the Hulk taking selfies with fans, and a wastrel Thor issuing threats through a headset while playing Fortnite with his fellow Ragnarok survivors. And yet, there's one bit of fan service that couldn't land more Grace Leslie if it were tossed off of a cliff of Vormir. During the final... Right. I'm, I'm pretty wait, skeptical. I'm wait, just... I'm listening. Wait, 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 because... So they, they're painting a picture, but what they're saying here, this is something that is topical. And it would be good if we did have a female here, because this is what I find interesting, because I've heard it echo it elsewhere. But during the final showdown with Thanos for the fate of the universe, Captain Marvel, Valkyrie, uh, Koye, uh, the Wasp, and several other female characters get information, yeah, yeah, yeah. presumably for audiences to rally around Marvel's commitment to gender equality and women's representation. Instead, the scene immediately revealed itself to be the apotheosis of studio's expectation that fans of female superheroes be satisfied with scraps while courting woke points for its supposed forward thinking. Now, I get that back half where like it looked really cool, like, hey, this is great. Yay, women, yay, feminism. But it wasn't. That's not what this was. And it was just kind of you. It was just like it was just kind of like a little nod to like, hey, look, we've got female superheroes. Let me just let me just uh, clarify, you know, so essentially what you're saying is that, yeah, it was cool, but um, too little, too late. And, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, there should be, you know, you shouldn't have to have this moment. Right. Right. Um, It should just be like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yes, I agree. It should be like that. But guess what? It's not. And I'm not the one making the movies. You're not. I'm going to go watch the movies because I love comic books and they make great movies. But, you know, here's the thing. Comic books started 100 years ago, right? It's not it's not anybody's fault that the majority of the most popular characters happen to be male. You know, I think, yes, I, I, I wish that women were equal in media and I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Um, like that should just be a thing, but it's not, you know, and Brandon, I don't want you to think that I'm not putting you on the hot seat or anything. No, I want to say, I want to say, yeah, (laughs) no, but, but that's not the case. And so I think that, I think that Disney was putting, you know, they're, you know, and I'm a male, so I don't know the female perspective. Um, but I think it was a good gesture. And I think that having um, not only, you know, you got Captain Marvel, which was a hit, you have uh, Black Widow, which, you know, I think they kind of flubbed on the release, especially surrounding Scarlett Johansson. They have, um, you know, Elizabeth Olsen headlining mm. that that Wanda Vision uh, Disney Plus show that was a hit. 
Yep, WandaVision. So I think they're doing a really good job of starting to incorporate more female characters and um, giving them a story to tell and that kind of thing. Uh, But I think it also will take some time. I don't think we'll be having the same conversation in five years. I hope not. You know, we shouldn't be, but yeah, no valid. It's just something I I felt that like, it'd be good just for us to address because it is something that other people have mentioned. And I feel like we'd be, we we wouldn't be doing it justice if we, if we let that pass by talking about a great film, but talk about something that has been on people's minds. Well, it's kind of go ahead. No, just like one of those like elements where the movie misses the mark, even if it's not like overtly, you know, super, super out there. There is still something about it that we should, you know, at least recognize it. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to <laughs> yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of, I wish it would, felt a little more organic. Right. But, I mean, how do you create a moment like that organically? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. You know, I think they probably did their best. And, you know, you know what? Uh, I bet is that if there weren't more female scenes that we would hear, oh, there wasn't enough female scenes in it. Right. So and it's kind of like, like I, and, and to be fair, my honestly, if not for uh, Hawkeye, my favorite character in this film was Nebula. And uh, just I'm, and I, I've never seen the Guardians of the Galaxy films. I know she's nothing. a badass. I know nothing about them, yeah. but I, I love Karen Gillum. I think she's, she's awesome. She she's, crushes it. She's just a tall drink of red hair water. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, I, I love there her as uh, this uh, this character. But um, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Oh, but, and by the way, Natalie Portman is going to be Thor. Remember in the upcoming Thor? So yeah, I, we'll have to unpack that on a later else. date. Yeah, because I I mean that that's. That's I can't I can't I can't compute that right now. Um, yep. Let's. Where do I want to go from here? I guess, like I said, not to round this up or you know kind of finalize, but we got to start getting that direction now. Where when we when you look at this movie, where does this movie fall for you in the hierarchy of action films of comic book films? Where do you put this? Where where is this movie? Oh man, not not yet to say it's the greatest this or that or other or anything else. I mean, but where do you put that? Where do you think this movie? You have you where do you objectively where do you, where would you put this film? <sighs> or even critically, where would you put this film? Oh, I mean, I think critically. I mean, I you said it yourself. It's one of the higher it's one of the higher rated films just in general, outside of genres. You know, I think that um, that when you're looking at it from standpoint, I mean, it hits all the check boxes. You know, you got space, you got explosions, you have you know, things shrinking, things getting bigger, you have aliens, you have, you know, uh, um, time travel, you have, like what, what you do you not travel. have, right? You so time I think I, I, we up there, you know, with the best of them, I don't think you consider it an action film in the traditional sense. You know, not like a diehard or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard to compare. If you were to just combine, like if you were having, let's say, okay, the Lord of the Rings saga against the all the Avengers films against, you know, uh, you know, some other stuff. I think it's Star Trek, Star Wars, that kind of thing. I think it's going to rank up there, you know, because right. I think they did a great job with the cast, the the thoughtfulness with the storyline and balancing a good storyline and something that's cohesive with giving people what they want and you know yeah. what the the comics show i think if you want to look at it from like where does it rank for me within comic book films um probably top 3 or 4 okay top 3 or 4 yeah i mean maybe top 5 yeah. um i mean you got batman the old school and you also got Heath like the Ledger's. Dark, yeah yeah dark Knight, yeah 
And then you've got the 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 Infinity uh, War. You got Endgame, but then it's you know it, it gets really tough at the top, you know, because you've yeah. got the original Iron Man. Like you know, you've got uh, these. It's hard to. And also, yeah, I'd say top top three, top three, top three. any yeah, any solid. given Sunday kind of thing, you yeah, know, I'm top, with you. anything. I'm with you. Uh, just because, yeah, it's it it just be so hard to pick one, um, and then you also have to look at okay, well, is it just a great movie standalone, or how does it play a role in a larger storyline too? Right, and that's where I want to kind of like interrupt you for a second because I wanna I want to reference. I, I reached out to some friends as far as what they thought, and my friend Gina on that I that I do that that I do these virtual hosting parties on Stream Lounge. She said, to be honest, I didn't like this movie the, the first time I saw it. Then I went and watched all the movies, most for the first time, and then I really liked this movie. Now I'm hooked. I felt like it was just too much originally, not enough character development, too many stories lumped together. Then I watched the backstories and it all made much more sense. I refuse to read the comics, though. So I agree with her, but I also take, I'm not say issue, but I also disagree in a sense where I haven't seen any of the other films. And I'm not really interested in the backstories other than just having conversations with you casually about them. Like, Hey, this, that, and the other, I think, I think this franchise, even though I've never read the comics and I haven't done the backstories, Mm -hmm. I still think they can Mm -hmm. work as standalones and you can still appreciate this world because even if you've never read the comics, you fucking heard of the Hulk, you've heard of, you know, Thor, you know, right. you, you've heard of Captain yeah. America. You've heard of these people, even if you don't necessarily know their worlds or you're not even interested in their worlds. What and what you mentioned how Disney got this right, they got this uh, that right. Yeah, casting is one thing. Um, whether they got the right actor that looked a certain part, it's not just that they they got actually real talent, real mm-hmm. like real legitimate good actors to play these roles right chris oh, yeah. evans has chris evans has been a fantastic actor long before he was ever captain america robert downey jr was a fantastic actor actor for decades before he he donned iron man and then you know um jeremy renner and a myriad of other you know uh it took you them go th- weaving you go weaving it took them three attempts to get hulk right but they got there with mark ruffalo mark and... ruffalo nailed it you know josh brolin mm. oh my god yeah, michael you... roker you know like keith urban you could just keep going and going and going and going and it you wouldn't end scarlett right. johansson mm-hmm. you know so i mean all of that um works why this movie works for me and i and like i said um want to kind of get to it the why this movie works for me is the fact that apart from nick fury everybody that was in the first one is back in this one like this movie really just goes back and i know that they they brought samuel jackson back for like 30 seconds for like the tune of like like five million dollars or whatever just for him to be like in there for 30 seconds jackson, and not pay say him what anything. he wants just pay him what he, he wants just, 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 just pay him, him what he doesn't say wants. anything but Man, they, who cares yeah but they brought everybody that was in that first one back right they so this is a great completion of that arc mm-hmm. so it works even though i didn't love the the original i thought it was a decent film you know i thought it was a decent film um but this movie does does that well where now you're getting that payoff and you brought everybody back that were in the other mm-hmm. films but you know and, and sure you know you we, we brought ant-man who wasn't in those but he was kind of like the device to kind of get this thing in motion and same thing with a uh, with a uh, captain marvel but it's your iron man it's your captain america it's your hulk it's your thor it's your black widow it's your Hawkeye, right? Those, right. Those, those, right. those are your central figures in that original. And those are your mm-hmm. central figures in this film as well. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it works. Mm-hmm. It works. And then you've got a passing of the torch. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Um, all right. Before we, I do any miscellaneous notes or anything like that. And I've got a couple little like final questions for you, but is there any like key dialogue or anything like, because I mean, this movie is filled with like little quips and bits. Oh man. I mean, 
Yeah, I, I, I really liked where, uh, you know, I go back to where like Captain America got the hammer where Thor's just like, oh, I knew it. Like he was worthy. But then later on when they're fighting, um, they end up with, you know, Captain America has the big hammer uh, and, you know, uh, Thor has the small one and he's like, no, I get the big one. And he throws it yeah. back and forth. I thought was that, you know, that was just like kind of organic, funny. Um, I think that that or no, where, where, you know, Tony starts to Doctor Strange is just like, is this the, or tell me this is the one or whatever. And Doctor Strange is like, if I tell you what happens, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. And later on when he looks at Doctor Strange and he's like, well, is this it? And he's like, you know, he holds up his finger and he kind of knew what he had to do. Um, and he just said, I am Iron Man and boom, mm -hmm. like that, whoever wrote that just nailed it. <laughs> well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I think because, there's an anecdote I heard about it too. So, yeah, go ahead. so I don't know if you know about this or you mentioned like the anecdote, but Robert Downey Jr. wasn't convinced he wanted, like he wasn't sold on like, I don't know if I want to go back to that. Like, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So he was brought over for a dinner and they had like pitched him and he wasn't completely sold. But Joel Silver, like the producer, who's also like a buddy of his, he's like, are you fucking mad? You have to do that. That's like the best line ever. That is the perfect send off. You have to do this. And Robert Downey Jr. basically being kind of like guided by one of his buddies. Like, slash fine, like, fuck you. Yes. Fine, fuck you. Fine, fine, I'll fucking do it. Whatever. And yeah. that's that's how it happened. Um so yeah, no, brilliant, brilliant. I, I do want to bring this up before, not to like uh genius. Uh, yeah, it is genius, but I have to bring this up because I mentioned like one of like the central themes of this movie is obviously time, right? Cherish the time that you have with people you love, cherish your time on earth. And watching the movie before, I enjoyed the scene because I love, I love the actor John Slattery. I was a big Mad Men fan, but um where where iron man has that moment with his father right mm. and howard stark yeah and he doesn't know that it's his son but I, I i suspect that he does actually know it's his son like that's my hot take is that he, he he knows who it is um that's my hot take and it's just one of those things kind of like howard stark was he was sharp you know um yeah he kind of he, yeah. he he knew there was something special yeah yeah but, um cool he said do i know you yeah exactly exactly mm -hmm. and and they were both named howard right and uh but he has a line just that i really enjoyed which is like no amount of money ever bought a second of time right yeah yep. and and again that hits me kind of like in the feels right now just in my own personal story those that have listened to podcasts they you know they they know that you know i recently lost my father and just what I wouldn't give just to have another moment, just another conversation, you know, and mm -hmm. my father and I were super close and I don't have any regrets um, other than, you know, um, obviously losing him, you know, but as far as my relationship with him, you know, I'm, I, I have enormous peace because my father knew how I felt about him. And, and um, I, I like to believe that he was proud of me. You know what I mean? Like, so the, yeah. like just, but that scene, yeah, just got, you know, so that was a, a key moment and a key dialogue that that sticks with me uh, personally and everything. And I think anybody that's ever lost anybody can kind of, whether it's a parent or a sibling or anybody can kind of relate to that, which is, yeah, doesn't matter, how, it mean, doesn't matter how much money you have, you know, I, you, you I can't, definitely you agree can't with buy you. another second of time, right? Mm. So life is life is precious. And that even segues to a uh, one of the the final lines that um, Iron Man says at the end, like in his his video footage, right, where he's like, you know, uh, part of the journey is the end. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. like this, yeah. this, this movie does tackle time. It tackles with death, not specifically just the idea of winning a war, losing a war, mm. but like our own mortality. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. Understanding that. And that's, mortality, and, loss, sacrifice. Um, you know, there's a lot of pretty heavy themes that are touched on. Yep. Um, definitely a darker movie mm, in for sure. tone, you know, than really anything we've seen. Yeah, it's interesting because of the fact that this movie is such, you know, like again, 
fan service and so like super like act uh like action packed and whatever yeah. but the issues that they're tackling are are grounded in reality and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. idea of failure and even what um Thor's mother says to him, right? Whereas like everyone fails at who they're supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a measure of a person, of a hero is how well they succeed at being who they are, right? right. Just yeah. this idea of like our aspirations versus, you know, like uh, idea versus reality. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'll, I'll tell you what, that can be a hard pill to swallow. Mm. Without you a doubt. Know? Yeah, like, so while it's a hard pill to swallow, you know, you can always have hope mm -hmm. if right. Because even in the darkest of times, you never know. Black never Panther know. might come right through that little, mm -hmm. you know, hole in the sky. And, and there you go. Yeah. Uh, two final segments. Yes. If, uh, if you're ready. <sighs> RIP got... Chadwick Boseman. Yes. Yes. One, um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah. Um, so two final segments, mm -hmm. one, just a couple like miscellaneous facts. Mm -hmm. And then two, we had some questions. We had some listener questions that we're going to get oh, into. Oh, really? Yes, we do. <sighs> cool. So first and foremost, uh, miscellaneous facts, Robert Downey Jr. Apparently was uh -huh. the only character to read the entire script from like beginning to the end. He was the only one that yep. actually got the entire script. Yep. 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 I knew that. Which is wild. You like, I mean, I get it. You know, when you're attached to these projects and everything, like you're going to get your scenes, but as an actor, like, it would, like what do you, well, like, um, what I do think you mean I'm only going to get my lines. Well, I, I, I think Tom Holland got fake scripts too. Really? <laughs> I, yeah. Um, because he was such a, not on purpose, but he would just leak everything all the time and in interviews and stuff and like live interviews and stuff uh, where I believe uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was uh, assigned to him on the worldwide tour to like monitor him. I mean, I I'm pretty sure there's articles dedicated to that. Um, it was really funny uh, as I was like watching uh, the press and that kind of thing before it came out. Um, yeah. That yeah yeah absolutely yeah uh what what else another miscellaneous fact the the line I love you three thousand yeah comes from Robert Downey Jr.'s actual daughter yeah. something yeah. that the the writers love they incorporated uh that into the film uh, original title of this was supposed to be what the Infinity Gauntlet or one of the films of of this was supposed to be the Infinity Gauntlet mm -hmm. but that was scrapped for yeah. Infinity War slash End Game yep. Uh, 1400 visual effect artists, uh, were used to create the final back battle sequence. I believe it. 16 weeks. I believe it. And what's wild and no disrespect to the film 1917, but Endgame was nominated for only one Oscar when it was released and was nominated for best visual effects. And it didn't win. Again, 1917 won. Again, no I disrespect. Mean, the movie's a fantastic that's a film. Phenom but come on. I know. 1,400 different Did, effect artists. 1,400 you artists. You didn't watch this in, in like, in a theater, right? I did. Yep. Yeah, you did. You. you did. Yeah. You did. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I basically I, br I brushed off a Wednesday, like, yeah, AM that's right. to that's go right, to. <laughs> because I, I told you, you know what? Just, just go ahead and go watch it. And you're like, you know what? You know what? I think I'm going to. Yeah. So basically, I brushed <laughs> off like, a day at work go, and caught like a noon show. Hey. And uh, yeah, you watch what? you watch uh, Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, man, you just got to treat yourself. Yeah, treat yourself. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. What else? Er, do, 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 do. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, so I just want to talk about like profanity because obviously. We we get a lot of we get a lot of prof profanity from uh from Captain America in this movie where he uses yeah and there's and, there's not enough <laughs> yeah not enough but what I did want to do is throw out which Avenger used the most profanity like overall like from like the the the, the Avenger films which Avenger has used the most profanity all four of them yeah um and can we define avengers because they're not all in all the films so i would say that but this one this one is this guy is he is in all of them mm -hmm. without a doubt yeah 
Probably starts Tony with Stark. iron, ends with man. Yeah, I said Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah, Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, which 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 Avenger has never used any profanity whatsoever? Out of any of them. Mm-hmm. And granted, he was only in a couple. In a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't in two of them. Basically. Well, that's not an Avenger then. Vision. Vision is the yeah. The but one. He's not, I mean. And then apart from all. that, I want to say it was uh, Hawkeye. They apart didn't. from that, that doesn't really, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, my guess know. would have been Hawkeye. But I wasn't going to think even, I wasn't even thinking Vision because he was only in two. So like, you know, even if, even if he only cussed once each movie and same with Hawkeye, Hawkeye by default would lose because he was in, well, I don't know. Were they mm-hmm. in the same map? Eat. All right. Well, good stuff. Are you ready for some questions from some guests? Sure. All right. So this fr- this question comes from my friend John, who's been on the show a couple times. All right. Which Avenger has the best hair? Ooh. I mean, I'm going to say Thor. You're going to say Thor? Okay. Yeah. I'm going Hawkeye. I'm going with that really weird mohawk that he has. I mean, it's uh, cool. It evolves, I, but yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always a sucker for elevated hair. Yeah. So. Wait till uh, you see Thor in uh, Love and Thunder. He looks like a like eighties hair metal. It mm-hmm. looks awesome. So Harry Winks asks, if you could change one thing in time, what would it be? Me? Mm-hmm. If you could change one thing in time, what would it be? If I could change one thing in time, what would it be? Maybe we'll come back to it. You think about that. You know, well, I you know the only thing I can really say because I. I I'm really happy, you know, with my life. Um, so I wouldn't really change anything because I would not want to risk losing anything I had. Um, I think the only thing I'd probably do is, you know, uh, maybe invest a little more, uh, in the things I had been investing in, just maybe Mm. up that or something like that. Still do the same thing, just more, you know, on a bigger scale back then, but you know, nothing because why? I'll just change things moving forward if I want to see the change. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got my thoughts, but for the sake of time, we'll keep going. But I'm, these are questions more directed for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do, do favorite time travel film? Because this movie obviously tackles time travel. Are we, are we excluding this? Yes. Exclu- well, no, I mean, if this is your favorite time travel film, uh, I mean, this is probably my favorite film that includes time travel, but I wouldn't say it's a movie about time travel. Sure. Sure. So, um, hold on. I want to find while you're looking, I'm just going to reel off a few. Of well, my I'd say, I'd say just in general, I mean, back to the future. That's a, that's a correct that, answer. That, that, and, that, and that, that, there's not, but, but I'm going to pull up my, like one of my niche favorites just because of, yeah. So go ahead. Now I've, uh, I've asked this question before, or I've, uh, um, I've, we did Bill and Ted before. So, um, that's another one. Yeah. Another so my life. favorite. So, uh, five, I'll do my top five and it's an alternating scale. And I don't know what Terminator. I said the last I don't, now that's a great one. My top five in no particular order. Back to the Future, Bill and Ted, uh, 12 Monkeys, Safety Not Guaranteed, and the movie Frequency. And But I mean, those are those are just right off the top of my head. There are a myriad of other, like Looper is really good. Um, shit, fucking even Time okay, Cop is so, really good. So about, about Time is good. Not, you know, good good ones um i think that i i don't know if frequency is really about time yes it is is it i feel like because they communicate right so there's time more like their airwaves are are time traveling they're they're speaking right that's what he tells his father something to basically affect the present so he does oh use- you're right okay okay i was i was thinking like man that was almost like but nobody goes back in time oh, so I, I, think, I'm with, yeah. I'm with you yeah 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 with you. yeah well i'd probably well here's another one that i was thinking of time travel terminator yeah terminator is fucking awesome like yeah. but i was gonna say uh the one that i actually like 
Um, but not definitely not the best movie by any means. Uh, but I, I, I was a time machine. That's a phenomenal movie. <laughs> it's Don't underrated. Talk. It's oh underrated, man. Dude, number two is good too. But I haven't seen that one. Yeah, number one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, hot tub time machine. Oh. Um, no, I was gonna say timeline, the one based on uh, Michael Crichton's book. Oh, I never it, saw. It. Yeah, it's it's it's, you know, it's when I think it's a '90s or something like that. You know, it, it wasn't a font. Uh, 2003. Okay. It mm-hmm. has a 5.6 IMDb, <laughs> a rotten tomato score of 13%. Okay. 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 It met- sounds met- right up my alley. Met- Metacritic of 28%. So, Ooh, you know, I have, what is yeah. this called? I need to see it. Timeline. Okay. Done. Now, Done. now, 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 here. He, so here's what I really like about it. Um, it has Paul Walker, which I actually really like Paul Walker. I think he's a good actor. You know, he's good in, in some, uh, ah, what's, I can't Fast remember. Like, no, there was another one. It was like brick. I can't remember. It was in Pleasantville. No, he was in a couple other ones that I, w- I was thinking of like, you know, but anyways, um, in this particular movie, it's just really interesting. And it's kind of like, you, have you seen Stargate? Oh yeah, I love Stargate. Right. So same kind of. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you know, you. it's not Star Starship or what, Starship Troopers. You know, Woo-hoo. it's just you know, it's it's that type of movie, but it's time travel. And I, you know, anytime it's on, I'll leave it on. Mm-hmm. I don't change it. You know, because such a bad movie but I don't yeah care. <laughs> yeah okay this is a rapid fire question i've got two rapid fire right. questions for okay. you and then i'm gonna answer one okay rapid All fire right. which uh comic book franchise has the best theme song comic book yeah comic book movie franchise i mean avengers avengers okay yeah because uh, that's I'd like go marvel batman. i'd go back okay Actually, okay. no, I take that back. I would go original Superman. Ooh. 1970s Superman. Okay. All right. I'll give that to you. Um, all right. Uh, and your next uh, rapid fire question. Why are there still sequels when this is called when the game is over? I mean, why, why are there still sequels when the game is quote over for Endgame? Well, I mean, rapid fire, obviously money. That's why there's another sequel. That one comes. No, from no, there's, it's I mean, there's money. so much more. No, come on, man. It's always no. about money. It's always about money. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> so no, that, no, I think there's more story to tell. I mean, it's the end of that story end game. Uh, it's the end of everything. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think they could have called it a bunch of different things. Uh, I'm not in love with the name end game you mm-hmm. know um i would have been happy with something different too because there is a lot more to tell and i think that and i think you'll see it more and more this is a media and stuff you'll see things going to this universe kind of construct or architecture in some things where it's kind of like Hey, it's on your TV. It's on your phone. It's on, um, you know, you see the metaverse and stuff like that mm-hmm. now too. Um, so I think they're just going to continue to expand it. Now, will people get, I mean, I don't plan on it. You know, I'm a fan, but who knows? I think it's just, they've grown it so big that I think it's just one of those things. You just got to be careful with how you navigate right. it. Right. Uh, I will tackle the the final two, but you can yeah. feel free feel free to interject if you yeah. have any input. So Ben White asks, who played the better Sherlock, Benedict Cumberbatch or Robert Downey Jr.? Oh, great question because Benedict Cumberbatch played Sherlock Sherlock Holmes on the BBC show Sherlock, and obviously Robert Downey Jr. played Sherlock Holmes in a couple Hollywood films. That's easy. Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, game set match. It's not even. It's no disrespect to Robert Downey Jr. I love the guy. Yeah, but Benedict no, Cumberbatch, no, 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 no. Easy, easy, easy. Agreed. I'm not going to argue there. And then lastly, why is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Robert Downey Jr.'s best film? I love that question. Um, so I. Why? Well, the question is, why is it uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s best film? Well, Robert Downey Jr. got to 
be very, very, uh, it is the most Robert Downey Jr. esque character he's ever played where it's just smart ass line after smart ass line. And he's the mm-hmm. narrator mm-hmm. and he it's, it's singularly, it's a singular, a singular uh, narrative. So it's all told through his eyes. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're asking me, is that Robert Downey Jr.'s best film? No, I might go with the movie Chaplin that he did in the early, early, early 90s. Um, Didn't he win an Oscar for that? I think he was nominated. I don't know if he won it, but he might have won. He he, he was definitely nominated for awards. But um, but sit on that one because i'm not entirely sold on it but if you're asking me why is kiss kiss bang bang his best film it's because he's a singular vision of that narrative and he's fucking hysterical in it and he loses a finger in the movie and he kills people accidentally he he goes for the girl gets the girl but doesn't get the girl because he goes for the girl's roommate gets the girl's roommate uh leaves the girl's roommate gets the girl doesn't get the girl gets the girl so i mean the movie's all over the place it's a fucking train wreck but anyway uh i'm done brandon do you have any closing thoughts comments concerns do you feel that we did enough fan service in this discussion obviously it's impossible to get through everything but do you think our listeners are going to listen to this and be like yeah they they spoke about my favorite scene they spoke about this moment they they address this is there anything we're leaving out i mean um not not that i can think of and uh i'll just say that uh if we did leave a comment send a message let us know and we'll take it into consideration and uh and on our next one Dude, that is very, very eloquent. Brandon Krisky. Dude, this was so fun. I, I'm sorry that we weren't able to finish this up in December, but whatever. It's April of the next year, but we got through it. Mm-hmm. We completed it. How do you feel? Was this a good undertaking? Did I you feel enjoy being accomplished? Yes. Yes. On our next project. Good. Well, listeners. Be on the lookout for that because I enjoyed having Brandon. I know you enjoyed having him as a guest as you guys crushed this download. Like you guys listen to these episodes uh, very, very like, again, very, very high metrics. So thank you. And as always, if you're still listening, fucking leave a review, uh, like leave comments, all that stuff. Let me, let me get some more likes and comments. I I've got way more subscribers and listeners than what you guys are doing so come on show show uh show me some love and um brandon feel free to say goodbye to everybody bye everyone (laughs) that's perfect all right ladies and gentlemen we will see you next time on another episode of stanford cinema bye now (laughs) 